Hello everyone, in this video we are going to see the design concepts. Let us see the concepts one by one. First is then abstraction. Actually what is abstraction is giving the information in the top level explanation. That means much level of detail is not mentioned in the abstraction level. So we all know that in a book we can see the abstract. The abstract of the book says about the chapters of the book and what each chapter is going to discuss on. That's it. And now like here. The procedural abstraction and the data abstraction are the two different types. What is the procedural abstraction is a sequence of instructions that have a specific and limited function. So overall the function is dealt in the top level. And likewise the data abstraction a named collection of data that describes a data object. So what data is going to be used. So just the names are mentioned in the abstraction level. Next one is the architecture so we know that architecture is the overall structure it is the overall structure of the software and the ways in which the structure provides conceptual integrity for a system that means how all the components of the system is giving give rise to the whole model of the system that is the framework that is an architecture and how it is go, going to give the conceptual integrity what is conceptual integrity is how it is going to achieve the concept what have been decided in the initial phases and then it consists of components connectors and the relationship between the between the components so it will just describe what are all the components how many components are there what is the level of each component and how the components are going to communicate with each other through the connectors and how they are related to each other. Next one is the patterns. The patterns are the templates on which the design is going to be built. A design structure that solves a particular design problem within a specific context. It provides a description that enables a designer to determine whether the pattern is applicable, whether the pattern can be reused and whether the pattern can serve as a guide for developing the similar patterns. That means these patterns serve as a template for defining the future components. So naturally when you are using the class concept, we always use the inheritance concept in order to derive the multiple base class, multiple uh, children classes so that we can use the functionality of the one class to the other class in that way the patterns also how the patterns can be reused and how the patterns serve as a guide for developing the similar patterns that means how these patterns serve as a template to develop the further new patterns so next is the modularity what is modularity is given a system to be built always the systems are divided into components it is called as a divide and conquer principle so when you think about developing a model first we come into our mind it's come to our mind is the high level design or the high level thought of the product and then we will keep on thinking about the innermost detail of the product same way when you start developing any product we always think in different modules so we think about one input module one process module one output module and the report module and how the some specification module the, the deployment model so everything is a specifically a module so module is the component which has well defined function so in that way the modularity helps to acquire the successful development of the product so separately named and addressable components that are integrated to satisfy the requirements so this principle is called as an divide and conquer principle makes the software intellectually manageable so as to grasp the control paths span of reference number of variables and the overall complexity so here actually what does it mean is the how to grasp the control is if some error or some problem happens in one module the user will be able to locate where the problem has occurred so in that way they are able to control the module and the span of reference how each module is referred by the other module how the error or the inconsistencies affects the dependent modules and how the number of variables are declared in each and every module and how, how overall the complexity has been defined so for all these things this modularity concept helps a lot 
and then information hiding what is information hiding is it is one of the oops concept where the information is just given in a top level the design the designing of modules so that the algorithms and the local data contained within them are inaccessible for the other modules so here the information is hidden between the modules so the information is only available in one module the other module can just get the data or give the data but the modules need not access the content of the other modules okay that is called as an information hiding this enforces access constraints to both the procedural detail and the local data structures so here that means one module contains some local data and other module need not bother or need not access the other data structures or the it cannot breach the constraints from one module to the other module next one is the functional independence as we know that a module is a well defined set of instructions so naturally they are functionally independent so the modules that have a single minded function and an aversion to excessive interaction with the other modules so the nature of one module is fully of similar nature where it has all the functionalities of one particular well defined function it need not have the part or the some portions of the other modules function so th that means the modules are well defined with the de independent concepts of its own it can have an aversion to the excessive interaction that means these modules need not interact excessively with the other modules so we always talk about the coupling and the cohesion okay so here when it is cohesion means the mo the modules are fully functionally independent they have all its well defined functions it need not interact with the other modules for its functionality so here high cohesion a module performs only a single task that means all the functions are well defined in the module low coupling coupling is the communication between one module to the other module so a module has the lowest amount of connection needed with the other modules next one is the stepwise refinement so here once we define or design a product we can have the stepwise refinement that means we can refine the product level by level development of a program by successively refining the levels of the procedure detail complements abstraction which enables a designer to specify procedure and data and it suppress the low level details then refactoring what is refactoring is a reorganization technique that simplifies the design or the internal code structure of a component without changing its function or the external behavior that means here this refactor is the the module itself it need not change the functionality or the external behavior that means a reorganization technique that simplifies the design that means the design is all inside the internal code of the module it need not correct with the other modules without changing its function or the external behavior next one is it removes the redundancy unused design elements inefficient or unnecessary algorithms poorly constructed or inappropriate data structures or any other design failures so this refactoring concept it removes the redundancy that is repeated information unused design elements if the elements are not used in one particular model it will remove from this concern model it will move to the other models where the things are necessarily important and otherwise inefficient or unnecessary algorithms so here it removes the in unwanted or an unnecessary algorithm that means suppose an algorithm doesn't work properly for the particular module and because of any structure data structure or anything else in of the module it will be removed from the module poorly constructed or inappropriate data structure that means the data structure is perfect for the particular application then only the model works efficiently so this refactoring concept helps to remove this unwanted which is unreliable or the inconsistent algorithms or the design elements which will affect the functionality of the component and next we see about the design classes the design classes these refines the analysis classes by providing design detail that will enable the classes to be implemented so here once we define a class and this classes will be analyzed again and again so the it refines means it will make the analysis classes fine by adding necessary data and functionalities or the methods creates a new set of design 
classes that implement a software infrastructure to support the business solution so here based upon the necessity of the business model solution it can create a new set of design classes that will help to implement the software infrastructure that means that will help to build the software let us see about the types of design classes so here one such class is the user interface class it defines all the abstraction necessary for the human computer interaction usually via the metaphors of the real world object that means the user give some data or the input from his system and ask for the service from the other system like an client and the the server and the client response response and the request so in that case we are using the user interface classes that is one type of class design class and next one is business domain class this refined from analysis classes identify attributes and services that are required to implement some element of the business domain so here this class always talks about the solution of the business so how the classes the data and the attributes can be defined in order to get the solution for the business model under considered next one is the process class this implement the business abstractions required to fully manage the business domain classes so once we define a business domain class this process class will implement the business abstractions that means it will detail all the abstraction that is mentioned in the initial abstract level component so all the process will be defined in the process classes and next one is the persistent classes this represent the data stores example a data base that will persist beyond the execution of the software actually what does it mean is even after the software is developed completely the data will be collected again and again whenever the application is run in any environment so this data are the persistent they are all the permanent thing which is all, always existing the example one such one is the data store so his database always exists even though the software product is developed and completed database keeps on accumulating as long as the organization goes on so for that we have a class called as a persistent classes next one is the system classes implement the software management and control functions that enable the system to operate and communicate within its computing environment and the outside world so here this really is the system class which enable the functionality between the systems in order to operate with the environment that means how the user interacts and how the business goes and how the technology changes accordingly how the class has to be implemented so those things are considered in the system classes next one is let us see the characteristics of a well-formed design class when we can say a uh, design classes well formed means first thing it should be complete and sufficient complete in that sense it contains the complete encapsulation of all the attributes and the methods that exist for the class so once you define your class every data and its method has to be fully encapsulated that is called as an complete and a sufficient solution next one is contains only those methods that are sufficient to achieve the intent of the class so what the classes is intended for what purpose we have created the class so only for that particular purpose or for particular application we have to define the exact attributes the data and the method that means unwanted data unwanted method should be removed from the class next one is the primitiveness what is the primitiveness is each method of a class focuses on accomplishing one service for other for the class that means one module or one class is that that class will always accomplish one service okay next one is the high cohesion what is high cohesion is the class has a small focused set of responsibilities and single-mindedly applies attributes and methods to implement the responsibilities actually this is the basic concept of the component or a module so it should have a well-defined set of instructions to do the responsibility of the class for which the class is intended and then the low coupling so here the collaboration of the class with the other classes is kept to an acceptable minimum that means when the class wants to get the service from the other classes the communication between the classes should be minimized as it is done as it is mentioned for the modules so as modules need to be low coupled and high cohesion the same way the well-formed design classes should also be high cohesion and low coupling 
then each class should have limited knowledge of the other classes in the other subsystems that means each class should have well knowledge about its own class its own function everything and it just have a limited knowledge of the other classes because it need not interact with the other systems subclasses unwantedly one only when the necessity comes or when there is only a need for the communication then it is necessary for one class to know about the functionality of the other classes that too in a limited manner so that's all the design concepts thanks for watching